Here's the kicking style of Bennett. From the AFL. That's a goal. In his first year as the punter, Darren Bennett is an Australian rules football star. To the NFL. Darren Bennett was the pioneer of this remarkable transition, paving the way for other Aussies to follow. A booming kick and a dedicated student of his craft, Darren forged his own American pathway, working his way up to the top of the NFL's punting elite to become the league's punter of the 90s and a San Diego Chargers Hall of Famer. But as enjoyable as that success has been, his NFL career isn't his most precious sporting experience. That mantle is reserved for the time he spends now with his two sons, including his eldest, Will, with whom he coaches the local high school football team, while also dealing with the challenges of muscular dystrophy. There you go. Both looking more comfortable here, though. An all-time great punter. A mentor to hundreds more. Well done. That was freaking tough work. And a devoted father for the ages. Darren's story. An Aussies Abroad special starts now. Spongy turf, stretch, Bennett. When I was getting towards the end of my AFL career, I realised that my knees were starting to get to the point where I couldn't run you know, anymore. Uh, Chris Jones, our strength coach at Melbourne, said, uh, you know, I've got a couple of mates that coach in the NFL, do you want to have a try at that? I still had plenty of punting leg left, I still had you know, flexibility and good strength in my legs, I just couldn't run. Uh, so I won two tickets in a long kicking contest the AFL ran uh, in 1992. Uh, we used the two tickets to Los Angeles as a honeymoon and uh, Chris Jones made the contact here in San Diego, got me a tryout and uh, I came here the next year in 94. So when you first turned up and went to the tryout, what were you expecting and how did you go? I wasn't expecting much. I just wanted to maybe have a look inside a stadium and go and meet some people. And uh, I didn't think it would go any further than that. And I had 10 punts. Halfway through, they went and got Bobby Bethard, the general manager, to come down and have a look at me. And he said, look, you've got a, a great leg. Uh, if, you, if you want to learn how to do this, we'll send you home with a video and some footballs and come back next year and we'll, uh, we'll let you come in and compete for a job. Little did I know how much work it really was. It was, took me 18 months. I mean, I remember driving away from Qualcomm going, how cool is that? Well, that's probably the end of it right now until they ask me to come back the next year. So the 18 months worth of work when you went home with a bag of balls, did you just have to teach yourself? How do you go about it? At the time, there was an American field actually at Olympic Park. So I would go out there a couple of days a week and my mates that were working in Melbourne would meet me after work and how crazy we were doing it, but what a great experience it was. And then they did ask you to come back and you went on the practice squad, but you didn't play a game that year, is that right? Right, correct. Yeah, I was right at the end of training camp. I thought I was probably the best guy, but. Um, American coaches are very conservative and they said, look, I th we think you need another year to develop, so we're going to put you on the practice squad. And then the following off-season, I went and played in NFL Europe. I played in Amsterdam at the Admirals and that was an invaluable experience to me. First of all, that's the first place I got to use the drop punt. I came back and uh, Leo Aragus, who punted at the Raiders, was our other guy at camp. We competed for the job. We were hitting punt return into the wind. And, uh, and I was hitting okay, but not great. But he was miss hitting the punts and the coach started yelling at him and he turned to me and said, mate, you take the rest of them. I remember turning around and walking back going, I'm the punter for the San Diego Chargers. And it was another week before they cut him, but I knew at that point they had, they'd lost confidence in him. My first game was the first game the Raiders went back to Oakland. So what a baptism of fire to be in front of the black hole at the Raiders. But it was always one of my favorite places to punt. Uh, they would read the media guide and they'd know everything about your family. They'd say all sorts of things about your family. And it was, so, it was always a great challenge to punt well there. And I was really out there wondering why I was there. Uh, and I didn't punt great for probably two or three weeks until I started to relax. How long did it take you to feel until you sort of settled in and you belonged there? Oh, it was probably three or four weeks. I think we had a game against Pittsburgh about my fourth game where it was really windy and, uh, and I, I thought I punted okay that game. And so I started to feel relaxed. The thing that relaxed me more than anything was these guys who I realised were legends of the NFL coming over and patting me on the back when I'd done a good job and, and having Leslie O'Neill and Junior Sayer who are legends of the game coming over and even knowing who I was. I remember miss hitting a punt in about my second or third game. Leslie got right in my face, he grabbed me by the face mask and he goes, mate, I've seen you hit 75 yard punts, you can do it every time, just relax, we all trust you. And, and you just felt 
having confidence from him to me was great, you know, and I think that helped me relax. Darren's booming right boot quickly catches the eye of the NFL world, as does another attention-grabbing play that has fans and commentators alike marvelling at this he-man from down under. Darren Bennett. Wow. Look at this kick. Wow. Spiral all the way back to the 12-yard line. Hastings. Maybe it was too long to kick. Hastings and Bennett brings him down. We told you he's a tough guy. Australian rules. He couldn't wait to make the hit. No idea what was going on. Just ran down as fast as I could. And the guy showed right in front of me and Andre Hastings. Uh, the week before, he'd run right over the top of the Arizona Cardinals punter. And I think he thought he was going to do that to me as well. Uh, I was just out of control. I was still sort of in Aussie rules shape, so I was a lot faster than I was at the end of my career. And, and they had me as an aggressive safety. Uh, and because he popped through there, uh, I just did the best I could. And in the end, I sort of clotheslined him and jacked him up a little bit. It's one of those things you sort of go, hey, that was pretty cool. I hope I don't have to do that ever again. I bent a plate in my arm and had to have it removed at the end of the season. But uh, looking back, you know, you wish you'd done that more. Uh, you don't want to hit the punt that brings that return back, but uh, it's such a, a, a great experience. And I know that everyone else on my team does it every play. So it's good to stick your head in there every now and then. Darren is suddenly on the national radar, an oddity, a novelty, some crazy guy from Australia who can kick the ball a mile and knock out punt returners with a single blow. Punters don't do that. Who is this guy? Some sort of crocodile Dundee of the NFL world? If it's not mind-blowing enough to NFL fans just having an Australian in the league, then how about him also being really good? Darren voted into the Pro Bowl, featuring the league's best of the best in his first season. That's not a punter. This is a punter. Steve Tasker, the uh, special teams representative, and that kick's almost blocked. A booming oh. kick, a tremendous <laughs> kick. Looking back at your first year now, and knowing what you know about punting, are you amazed at how quickly you developed? The fact that anyone, let alone someone from your background, could come in in their rookie year, go straight to the Pro Bowl? Oh yeah, I mean, it, it, I didn't realise how hard it was at the time, so you try and look back now and enjoy those times. Ahead on Aussies Abroad, Darren combines two of his greatest passions, punting Inside. and family. What do you get out of coaching with Will? Three hours of the day. To see the way the kids react to him and his knowledge, is, it's just a lot of fun. So it's the best thing I do during the day is to be on the field with him. Over the back is Bennett, and no mark. Bennett hooks it around the corner of the pocket. Tingo back with the flight of the ball has marked right in front of goal. Darren Bennett took the booming right boot he had used to launch Australian footballs and successfully adapted it to become one of the finest punters America's National Football League has ever seen. Despite only playing the second half of the decade, Darren was voted the NFL's punter of the 1990s. His stellar career took him to two Pro Bowls and in 2012, he became the first player voted by the fans into the San Diego Chargers Hall of Fame. A remarkable achievement given the historical anonymity of punters. San Diego! I'm honored to be here today, introducing my good friend, and newest member of the San Diego Chargers Hall of Fame, Darren Bennett. The one thing that I really take from this is the fact that you, the fans, voted me in as the 36th member of the Hall of Fame. When I left, we didn't have Halls of Fame in Australia, so it wasn't something you aspire to, but when you're out there, it's a very emotional moment. That's an amazing, amazing accomplishment. I hope he does get the recognition back in Australia because um, not only what he's done, but what he's done for other Australian punters and punters in general in America. It was amazing that you know, he was able to convince them you know, the charges back in the 90s to, to, to take him on board, or even to get a workout, like that's, that's a near impossible feat. To come over here and, you know, not only get, get the gig, but then to become as successful as he was at it, and also to incorporate, you know, part of that success came with incorporating the drop punt. I mean, he's the one that got a kick started. He is the godfather.
it sort of lit the flame. When Darren went over there and made it with the San Diego Chargers, I followed his career really closely, kept in contact with him. Um, every time they were back in Melbourne, we'd meet as a family, we'd have a barbecue, we'd talk about the little details about punting and living in the NFL. When you walk and drop, stop where you are and I'll walk backwards. Since his retirement from the NFL in 2005, Darren has become one of the game's most respected punting experts. Structure it. His passion for the craft has seen him assist hundreds of punters, particularly aspiring Aussies, for many of whom the Bennett residence in San Diego has become somewhat of a halfway house as they try to establish themselves in the US. Where does the passion come from for you? People might say, well, Darren, you've been there, you've done it, you've had a great career, you've set yourself up financially, everything's fantastic. Why would you care what happens to the next generation of punting? Why are you so passionate about it? I had some great mentors when I was growing up, and one of the things that was uniform across that was, it's your obligation once you've learned to pass your knowledge on. Nice, Corey. I've seen enough kids now that have been thrown on a plane from Australia nice and guy. sent to America. There's the punt right there. And we've had kids, you know, get homesick and go home. And to me, that's terrible. Nice save though, Jai. I think this is a great opportunity for these young men and they may not realise it until way down the track. Target. I take as much satisfaction at teaching Corey the first couple of days he's ever punted. There you go. Look at that. To teaching a high school kid to punt to taking Matt McBriar, who just needs minute little differences in his drop or nothing, just to shoot the breeze about life. And if he wants to ask me about punting, that's great. But that's something I take great satisfaction in. Oh, he's fantastic. Um, yeah, I don't know how I got so lucky sort of, you know, coming across a guy like him. You know, we're not family, but we are family now. You know, his wife, Rosemary, and his two, and his two boys, uh, they're, they're great. It's one of the reasons probably why I've stuck around so long. For me and for my family, uh, Darren and his family have been fantastic. It's, they've given us a bit of a stronghold to, to go back to every year or every second year to make sure that you know, things are okay with my punning and technique wise. Even after I made it into the NFL, he's been great. He's based in San Diego and the off season, Sav and I go out there and punt with him and he's got a great relationship with Matt McBriar and a lot of Australian kids coming through. Darren has an influence in their life and their careers. They're always welcome, welcoming to you know, any Australian who wants to come over and give it a crack and, and there's been plenty, plenty along the way. And they don't ask for anything in return, which is just amazing. Um, yeah, they, they're fantastic people. Really wonderful and you know, I, know, I know all the guys who have come through there uh, you know, are also so you know, thankful that, that, that um, They've had Darren and Rosemary to sort of look after them and become like their surrogate parents. So your house here has become a halfway house for Australian punters. Pretty much anyone who's anyone across the years has spent some time with the godfather of Australian uh, punting. I wouldn't say the godfather, but yeah, look, when we were in Minnesota, we didn't get many visitors, but since we've been here in San Diego, pretty much most of the time, we've got someone here or someone on their way or someone that just left. It's just a, a place that people can come and feel comfortable without having to go all the way home to Australia. Tommy Sheldon that's here right now, you know, he's a country boy from Echuca, uh, can punt the heck out of a football. Hopefully if he can make the transition, he may be the next guy going through yep. to the NFL. Jai Bond's been here, you know. I don't know, I don't think you can really describe him in <clears throat> a word or two, you know, he's just a, one of the best, um, best human beings and, and man you could, you could ever meet. And for me, he's been, you know, super helpful and, um, <clears throat> Just to help me as a person and his family has just been amazing. So can't really um, put into words what, uh, you know, getting a bit emotional here, Jace. Nice, Tim. Good power. Look at it. The satisfaction that you get from doing this must be enormous when you see someone come in Go, who's raw, someone like a Matt early days and then you go and see him have a very successful career at the highest level. You must get a great degree of satisfaction out of that. I do. You know, to watch these guys, they develop as, as men as well as football players. And I've seen Matt, you know, from when we used to punt at White Street Park in Brighton, uh, to go out and hit a punt in front of 90,000 people in a huge game, backed up in the end zone. Sometimes you have to look and go, and that, look how far you've come, it's been great. Ahead on Aussies Abroad, Darren Bennett, Darren's most special football bond.
with his son, Will, who despite living with muscular dystrophy, is every bit the eagle-eyed special teams coach his dad is. You see with the way Phil lined up, he's already lined up over here, then he walks this way and tries to punt. Oh, that's a straight drop, but he does a nice cross. Yeah, I think he did better that time. Oh, who's this old bent-legged dude? <laughs> I come up here, you hit me, you guys squeeze and attack. And so you do that over half the field until he designates which way he's gonna go. Muscular dystrophy is a genetic disease where the kids don't make muscle. And so for the first four or five years, they show sort of as normal kids. We have photos of Will at the beach when he was a young kid and he was very muscular. And that's one of the signs of muscular dystrophy. We didn't know that. But at, at five or six years of age, they start to lose muscle mass and they trip and fall and, and that's how parents usually find out. That's the age we found out at six years of age. And they, they never make muscle again. Uh, it's a disease that progresses as they get older. And at first diagnosis, it's like a whirlwind. All of a sudden, he's, he's in medical clinics, he's having people prod him and, and you know trying to assess things. I was away. It was a Cincinnati Bengals opening game of the season, so I was away for three days. That was probably the longest three days of our relationship mm. together is hard to play football that weekend. You go to the clinics and the doctors tell you what your future entails. You know, you take as much of that information as you possibly can and try and process it and understand there's a six-year-old boy sitting next to you listening to all this happen. After a while, you sort of settle in and Rosemary and I got together and said, how are we going to handle this? What are we going to do? A life keeps going, so you just keep going with it. Medications help for a little bit, but then they plateau. So I think you just ride the waves as it goes. But in the meantime, life happens, so you just start, you just keep doing what you're doing and and you know hope for the best for everything else that happens around you. For the first word enclosure. And 99 days out of 100, he's just a normal kid having a normal day. Understandably, sometimes he gets a little frustrated. And at 16 years of age, he's a teenager going through teenage things. All his friends drive, they're getting girlfriends, all that sort of stuff. Oh, he dropped the scrap! You try and work out how you can find a positive side to it. Will's always been interested in sports, and so he really drew us to where we are right now. You know, sitting with him, listening to him, his college sports on today, and he knows every kid from every college, the backups, he knows all that sort of stuff, and he's just a computer when it comes to that sort of stuff. And so he's been on football fields all his life, uh, so we just decided to try and have, have him treated as a normal kid. How did Will get into coaching? I think he got into coaching before he knew he'd got into coaching because he's always had an opinion of something. He sits there and screams at the TV yeah. about bad coaching or bad play. And so once we got to the school, at high school here, they came to us and said, if you will coach and Will will coach, we'd love to have him on the team. Coach Bennett is a superstar person. I can't think of anybody um, that has such a positive influence on our kids. Um, they see someone who's not only a role model uh, and a great citizen, but someone who cares deeply about the kids. It's not all the time where you get an all pro caliber hunter who's also a fabulous guy like he is. And it's just great to have him around our kids. What does it mean to Will, getting involved uh, in that formal way of coaching? Uh, it it makes, his, makes his whole school year. I mean, it manages his homework well, so he's got time for it. It's his best day of his week. Beyond the pure football, which is obviously something that's in his blood and that he loves, mm -hmm. that sense of belonging and that sense of team and mateship and spirit that I saw yeah. when we were at the game, that's obviously vitally important to him as well, isn't it? Oh, I think it is, and I think the kids have really embraced Will, you know, and, and in the middle of our second season, he had a major back surgery. His scoliosis got that bad, and that was the hardest part for him, was it was the middle of the football season, not the fact he was going through a major surgery. But the way the kids responded and supported him has made him feel part of that football team even more than he did before. All those kids have supported Will, he supports them and he coaches them and they know he does a good job doing that as well. So it's made him really a part of that whole high school, not just the football team. Turn the ball a bit more, Cody. He's earned their respect too, hasn't he? You can tell that from spending time around them. They value his opinion and the other coaches respect him being there, so I think he feels like he fits in and they call him Coach B. So. Yeah. Will is such a great role model for everybody else, just his determination 
what he brings to the team is just amazing. And uh, he inspires people just for Will being Will. Pleasure to have him out there. I need to write a college essay soon. And uh, I was actually going to write it on how Will has changed my life. I really got to know him the past four years. And he's a great kid. And he's formed a lot of me now and how I look at him differently and how everything is. He's a great coach. He's always there for help. He's great. Probably the best coach I've ever had. We'll have players come up to him during the game and say, just say hi. I mean, around the campus, great, too. Everybody loves him. Yeah, a lot of my friends are on the football team. And what's that like in terms of being on the sidelines on game day? I got to experience it last night. It's a fantastic atmosphere. I get really excited during games. It's just like the highlight of my week sometimes. Is it the best part of the year? Yeah, it definitely is. We're starting meetings at 7.30 on Monday. Well, brings a lot of you. Know, it sounds funny being how young he is, but experience. He's been around football longer than most people have been alive. Uh, it brings a lot of, uh, of genuine, genuine interest in the team and the kids and terrific uh, insight. And he sees a lot more than everyone else does and, uh, and he's, he's a great asset to the program. He's a real deal. He knows way more about the kicking game than I even can think about. He's Coach Ben. It's just as I am Coach Sobel. Uh, he's on the same level as that and, and the kids treat him with that respect as do the coaches and staff and, and it's just deserved. And to say hey and Darren interacting together. It's pretty special, isn't it? It's father awesome. And son. Absolutely. I'm a dad myself. They're awesome together. They're a team. Great team. It's like 270, that guy. Is your brain always working and analyzing? Is yeah. that just the way you look at things? Mm -hmm. I, yeah, it, that's the best part of the game is just analyzing how everything's working. Will, he's got an eye for it. And that's a really cool sort of father-son thing is, you know, they're both so passionate about it. And, and uh, and see Will out there every every practice. I mean, he'd be there all morning before I got there, um, and he'd stay till I left. He helped me out this off season after my surgery and give me tips as to you know what I was now doing as opposed to what you know, how I was kicking before. Um, yeah, and he's and he's great. That's the ultimate endorsement, isn't yes. it? Yes. <laughs> Where does he get this eye from? This eye for this the art and craft of punting. Because he sits so still all day in a wheelchair. I think his eye adapts and the rest of us have got so much going on, so much movement in our lives. I think sitting, just sitting still, he, he's, his eye's just developed and he's got a father that's, you know, he's followed football and a father that coaches and they have some very heated arguments sometimes <laughs> over coaching, we do. but you know. When we're coaching on the field, we're kind of equals r rather than father-son sometimes. Do you butt heads? Occasionally. Who wins? It's different each time. What do you get out of coaching with Will? Uh, it's my favourite three hours of the day. It's uh, to see the way the kids react to him and, and his knowledge, is, it's, it's just a lot of fun. Especially for basketball. The best thing I do during the day is to be on the field with him. Will could not have been blessed with a, a, a better father and a better family to, to come into this world too. So it's great to watch Will grow into the man he's becoming uh, and coaching LCC. And it's great to watch the two and they're very lucky to have that relationship. But I'll speak to Darren, he'll, he'll say, Sav, you should have seen it on the weekend. You know, we, we did this onside kick and uh, for some reason it was called back. Uh, and then Will said, let's run it again. And Darren, got, and, and, they, and the coach said, are you sure? And he goes, yeah, Will said, they didn't know it was coming. They didn't know what to do, let's run it again. So they ran it again and they got the ball again. It was fantastic. But the excitement that he was expressing for for, for Will and, and calling that play and what he did was just amazing. So it was, I mean, I had hairs on the end of my back, you know, just thinking about it. Now you wouldn't have seen a lot of your old man punting, would you? But you would have seen a little bit on film? Yeah, I think so. You reckon you could have fixed him if you had been able to give him the Will Bennett treatment? I think so, I think I could have. Working together with him, having something like that that you can share must be very special that you guys can have this common interest and you can go and get involved with these other kids and, and do something together must be fantastic. Yeah, I think so. I think it's brought us closer as father and son as well as coaches. It's special and it's just something the two of them have and can't take it away and I don't get too involved and make sure they get there and get home. Life takes on many forms and it's not necessarily the one you thought it was going to be. The enjoyment of life is, is uh, different things. The college kids have. come in and they think they're coming in to learn punting and then when they learn from Will they learn more about life than they do about punting and hopefully that gives them an appreciation to go work hard and be good at punting because they're being taught by a kid in a wheelchair and he's trying to help them enjoy their life and so hopefully they learn that as well. I think he just brings a calm to a lot of people and and thought-provoking, like, oh wow, if he can do this, what could I do? And you know, 
where does Thomas fit into it all? But he's always out on the field with, with us when we kick and punt. This year he started to shine to it a little bit, so he may be you know, the next Bennett punter. He's punting on the junior varsity team. You know, hopefully he'll find a passion for it and maybe if he goes to college and he can punt there, maybe we'll go coach there as well. It's really hard to predict the future and so that's one of the things we've always said to Will, don't predict the future because a lot of the predictions never come right. They never come out how you thought you'd predict them. So just work your way day to day. Definitely he wants to go and coach college. He thinks the next challenge is to go and teach some of these college kids how to punt. And so there may be a situation where even though we love San Diego, we may move and go to college with him and I'll go coach with him somewhere. You know, it's, this is part of his journey and my journey is, is over as far as football is concerned, but it's now attached to his journey and I, I love being part of it. Best bloke you could ever meet, that'll do. Best bloke you could ever meet. And just, if I could emulate someone to be like it, it'd be him.